Hello there, Gamoza here. Um, today I want to show you what I've been working on in the past few days here. I've been making a small little program that collects World of Warcraft auction data. It pulls it from the API that Blizzard just started providing. And it updates about every hour, so every hour I pull the entire auction house database. Um, I can do it for all servers or just specific servers. I just get it for my servers in particular because you know, I don't want to waste the space because it's pretty much, uh, I think, yeah, it's about a gig if you pull all of the auctions. Obviously, if you can press that, it goes down to like 80 meg because they're all text-based files. But essentially, um, I had a whole command line utility that goes along with this, and you can use that to, you know, pull the market for changes. You can use it to simply look up items, cheapest items, average prices of items, you know, where the items are at, and stuff like that, but t tonight I finally got into it, and I really wanted to make this graphing, because I'm I'm into investing in the real world, so I wanted to bring that kind of into World of Warcraft, and I haven't seen that done properly yet. So essentially here, I have a simple OpenGL application, and I'm basically plotting the prices that I've pulled here for my server, this is uh, in particular for True Gold, but, um, it's really a simple simple layout. You have the lines in the middle of the bars which uh, represent the average price for that hour. Well, if if you look at the if you look up top at the date counter, you see that I only have a few days logged here, but um they're about every hour. So it l these averages are basically the average price for that hour. As you can see, there's a little bit of a decline. It's pretty neat to actually see that um, forming over time. Hopefully, you know, in two weeks, I'll really get to do some neater analysis and bring some trading algorithms into this. But right now, I don't have enough data, so I'm just leaving it at plotting the data. But um, up top, you can see the gold where the cursor level is at. So it this auto scales to the current data. So that's why it's like that. When you're hovering over a bar, it tells you the date of that bar, which is really neat. Even if you like skip data, I don't have a I don't have a bar that I skip data for here, but if you skip data, it will still tell you the correct time. It won't put a space in, but it will at least um tell you the correct time. Then at the bottom in the blue here, you have the volume um which is basically how many items are on the market. So, as you can see here, uh, there were 59 true gold, true, however you want to pluralize that, on the market. The average price was about 718 gold. The lowest price in that hour was 694 gold, and the highest price in that hour was 732 gold. So that's actually a really nice um, looking bar and a pretty high volume there. Um, <laughs> right here, it. I can promise you this isn't a bug. Someone did actually put some true gold on the market for 550 gold, and <laughs> even though the running average was 720 gold at the time, so I thought that was quite humorous to see that. But here's the interface. I mean, it's really neat. You get to see the trends. Um, you can see the lowest, the highest, and the average point. Everything is based on buyouts right now. Um, I'll probably add in. I'm going to try and figure out a way to make it look nice to have the buyouts and the bids uh, represented on the same bar um, without getting too cluttery. But that's basically it. You get the time, the gold, the volume. Uh, you get to hover over. If you're outside of the bounds, it doesn't matter. Um, I don't have resizing enabled because I'm doing this YouTube video and I don't want to mess up format and stuff like that, but resizing is all uh, built in there just fine. All the all the sizes are variable, so those just need to be changed. Um, just an explanation of kind of uh, the different colors of the bars. Uh, red bar symbolizes that the lowest price has gone up uh, since the last one, so essentially saying that, you know, it's starting to get more expensive, so red meaning bad. I mean, depending on, depending on if you want to buy or sell um, uh, green means that, you know, the price has dropped since the last bar, and then the gray is when it stayed the exact same. So, that's pretty nice to have the actual gray there, because you can see that 
sometimes, even though the bars are on the exact same pixel, they still vary quite a bit in gold, like, you know, one gold or something, and they're still going to end up on the same pixel. Um, you can also use the arrow keys to scroll through the data. Um, can't go over the edges, obviously, but that's pretty nice, and it auto scales to fit better on there, so you can see once we get past this bar, it kind of scales. And then once we get past this big uh, 59 volume there, the volume scales as well. Um, everything works the same. Well, this this isn't right. Um, I'll get I'll get that fixed later. I currently have the price based on that division, um, but that'll take two seconds to fix. I just added in this scrolling, so I'm surprised that even works properly. You can also zoom in and out. Um, which is pretty neat. So uh, you can also scroll and zoom in and out. So you know, there's there's essentially everything. Um, but yeah, when it's when the data is off the screen, that that is giving some bugs. Um, when you're zoomed in, it's not having any issues with the timing. It doesn't seem. No, nope, that's not an issue. So it's just a matter of actually scrolling because I'm I'm dividing. Um, I'm dividing where the cursor is on the screen and implying that it's starting at the base position, so that literally will take two seconds to fix. But that's essentially what I have, and uh, I hope to see if this generates some interest. Um, everything is Windows-based. I was going to make it for BSD, but then I got lazy and didn't want to install BSD over the weekend, so I just made it for Windows. Um, I might port this to BSD slash Linux slash Unix Mac OS X. Um, later, but I could really care less about those platforms anyways, except for BSD. Um, but yeah, this is what I have, you know. It's pretty neat to see, you know, the volume and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm uh, going to bring up another chart here just to show you what it's like on another chart of higher volume. Alright, here I am back again. I've got, th uh, this time I have Ember Silk Cloth brought up, and as you can see, this is a much higher volume item. Like here, it hit, uh, 1200 volume. And, um, you can see the, uh, average price has actually been, uh, it's seeming to go up a bit, although the max price has been staying basically the same, and the, the minimum price is slightly going up, and it's kind of negligible. But uh, volume's pretty good and everything, but it's it's really neat to actually see all this and, um, you know, how it works. So it's like 10 gold, 3 gold to 10 gold with an average of, like, 5-ish gold. Um, I also fixed that stupid bug. <laughs> it, was, it was one tiny change to fix that, so now you can go off the screen and stuff. And, ooh, love watching that rescale. But, um bar shouldn't be going off the end. Oh well, fix that later. But, uh, yeah, that's essentially what I have, and, um, that's all I wanted to show. So, uh, thanks for watching.